I'm going to show you a way to make a couple different utilitarian objects at home from slabs. I'm going to make a plate and a bowl, uh, and we call this, you know, I'm going to go into the into, inside of this, which is a slump mold, because you're slumping, but if you went on the back, or this, it's called humping, right? <laughs> so we're either going to do a slumping or humping today, and I'm going to show you uh, both ways. So, I just got some clay out, I don't know, it's about... Probably too much. I'm gonna do a little less. Probably more like that size. So I wedged this up already, but you can see it's probably a small pumpkin, grapefruit. I don't know, what would you guys say this is? It's not really nice. Bigger than a grapefruit. What's that? Bigger than a grapefruit. Bigger than a grapefruit. Small pumpkin. Candle. Candle. Yeah. I like, I like that. All right, so if you haven't been checking in, you should know what I'm doing right now. I'm throwing this slab. And this clay's pretty wet. In slow motion, boom, it hits right there. And I let go, sort of like that. You don't, it's not slamming. It's not straight down, because it'll stick. And notice I'm also using a piece of wood that is relatively absorbent. And you know it's absorbent, because you can see that difference of color. It's, it's absorbing it. And I might have made a mistake right there. No, I didn't. Now, if you um, have a rolling pin at home, or, or are at school and want to do this, you can get a couple of rulers, a couple of pieces of wood, something like this. And I know, I, like I said, I used way too much, but I'm not going to need all this. Oh. Okay, and I don't put this right up against it, but I spread it out a little bit. I have these pretty big rolling pins, and I can push straight down, and I know that I have a totally level piece now. I got rid of any of the bumps and I'm running it right across that. And a lot of people try and hold on. I really just, I'll run it across my whole arms like that. So now I know I'm thinner than that minimum. Sometimes I'll even come back in and give it a little stretch like that. So I feel good about this. I'm going to put this out of the way. How thick do you think that is? That is, I don't know, that's about as thin as a pencil, a little, about as thick as a pencil. Okay. Like a quarter inch. Quarter inch. Now I have a plate here. You can use any kind of plate. You know, there's a, like this would have some great texture on the bottom. Any kind of shape. But we're looking for like a small, a medium dinner size, to a, de a larger dinner size plate. This is, you know, trash bag. I try to get the stuff that's a little thinner and a little lighter. That really heavy stuff is too crinkly. And I'll put it straight down here. And we, if you put that clay, if you don't put this down, you will have problems. Why? Just, it'll stick? Yeah, what'll happen is you'll put clay like right in here and it'll suction cup stick onto this. So you have to have something in between. If you don't have this, you can use newspaper, but this works really great. If you have a partner, they could grab this side and kind of lay it down gently, you know, like and kind of lay it down like this. But I've learned, I've done this a few times. Boom, I can kind of do that, right? So now, I don't know if you can see the undulation. I got some water and a little bit of a sponge. You don't gotta go crazy, that's too much. But I'm just gonna take my sponge and kind of rub it, rub it in and make sure that, that if there's an air bubble or an air pocket in there, I'm going down to the edge. So I'm pushing it in. I don't wanna press too hard. I wanna take rings off or anything like that because it'll leave lines or streaks. Okay, so I made a pretty big one here. Where's my needle tool? Anybody see it? There. I made a pretty big one here. So I'm just gonna do a rough cut first. I'm trying not to cut that flat or, or cut that plastic. And I'm gonna get rid of this for the moment. Be smart. Ball that stuff up and cover it as you're working so it doesn't dry out. So you don't look up in an hour and realize you just lost all that clay. So here's my trick of the day. Right, if I can get my hand under there, like a waiter, right, and I can pull this plastic back away down and I'm going to grab it on the bottom kind of like an ice cream cone. I'm trying to twist all that plastic. So I don't even see under but I'm kind of pulling it away but I don't want to like I don't like make it pop up you know I'm just getting that out of the way. And you can get a buddy or not and then I take this and I find that edge carefully just found the edge. I start to cut, and I'm very careful. 
you see how I get rid of that. I'm very careful to keep this upright like this, not at a weird angle, because then your edge will be funky. I want to keep it upright like this. So I'll go around confidently, keeping that at a, I guess that's a 90 degree angle, right? Yep. I'm such a good mathematician. Perpendicular. Perpendicular. See, we do all kinds of stuff in art down here. Now, sometimes you'll get where it can actually might get a little bit funky right there. And as ratty or rough as an edge, even like that is, I would take my wet fingers, and I don't want like a, a straight, you know, like a cut. Like a, I want to smooth that out. I don't want to make it like, a, I don't want to press down too hard to get like a nice edge. I just want to round that edge with my wet hand. Soften it. Soften it. There you go. I like that round it, soften it, but I don't want it to become too thin. Or so like you said, I still left plenty of that thickness, but I rounded it. This is the start of a simple plate. Like, I mean, how long did that take? I'm like yakking and taking my time and showing stuff. I could have boogied a lot quicker than that even. So this could be like the start. You could bring this in, or like I could send you home or with some colored slips to do scraffito. You could draw on this. You know, you could start to like do all kinds of designs on this in some strange way. Whatever it is, you know, whatever it is you're gonna do. But at the end, pardon me? Let me say something. Am I hearing things? Mm -hmm. Okay, in the end, what's great about this is you have a built in drying system. So I kind of get that fluff, right? I've got my bag right here. So I would carefully cover it up, you know, if I'm gonna work on it later. And I recommend if you're gonna do this and bring these in, leave it on the plate. You can bring it into school like this. It'll give it a little bit of a support system as you're carrying it in, you can put it in a box, even if it's gooey wet. Now, if you're like, I'm done, I feel great about it, um, I would make a little pocket, right? Kind of twist it and leave the ends, let it dry from the middle out is my point. Because if it dries, if you just leave it open and dry it, what'll happen is you'll come back tomorrow or in a few hours and it will curl. You know what I mean? Because the edges will dry first and it will curl and you'll have a wobbly plate, right? So in, in like, you know, if you're like, I'm ready, I'm just kind of waiting around for this. I would get a hair dryer here or at home, get a set of hair dryer, hit this guy for about five or 10 minutes, keep checking it. Eventually you leave it out, let it sit. Because if you hit with a hair dryer, the top's gonna dry and then that, it'll go through the bottom and sort of the moisture will make its way back up and you kind of do that a couple times until you can pull it off. And when you pull it off, you'll see, boom, you'll get the bottom side, and then you would clean up opposite, clean up that side, sign it, take care of your business. But that's one great way to make a plate. Now a bowl, 